Praise the Lord. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for those who are faithful every day, every week as we come. And we learn from your word. Lord, we pray that what we learn, you give us the grace and the heart, the willingness and the faithfulness to follow through and be obedient to your word in Jesus' name. Open our eyes once again. Let's behold wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. And we we'll pray, Lord, the passion, the compassion for the laws you give every one of us so that, Lord, will be doers of the word and not hearers only. As you have saved us, help us, Lord, to be instrumental to the salvation of other people. As you have brought us into the kingdom, into the light, we pray, Lord, that we will also help others to come out of darkness into the light in Jesus' name. Speak, Lord, your children are hearing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28, verses 18, 19, and 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. The Lord Jesus Christ died for our sins. He was buried. On the third day, he rose again. After that resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and he appeared to many of them so that they will know that the resurrection is real. And now, as he was about to go to heaven, he declared unto them, as he is declaring to us today, all power is given unto him, unto Christ. And then he says, because of that, look at verse 19, go ye therefore. Therefore, that means because all power belongs to him. All power resides in him. The power to save, the power to heal, the power to deliver, and the power to set free, and the power to sanctify and make holy, and the power to energize us and be the people we ought to be and do the things we ought to do. Because that power is given unto him, and many people don't know. And many people are ignorant of the power that resides in Christ. Because of that, he says, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. You'll find one word there, nations. Actually, in the original, it means all ethnic groups, all people groups, all kinds of people. That means in a nation here, we have a lot of tribes, a lot of ethnic groups, a lot of language groups, a lot of neighbors in our communities. And it says, go ye therefore and teach them. What are we teaching them? That Jesus is Savior. What are we teaching them? That Jesus is the only Savior, approved of the Father. That there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus. Teach them. Let them know. And when they know that, call them to a decision. And then after they come to a decision and they are born again, and they give their lives to the Lord, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then in verse 20 it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then it says, behold, I am with you always until when? Until the end of the world, until the end of the age. He told the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. And if you are part of the church of the living God, if you are a child of God, if you are born again, you are saved. The calling is coming to you. And he says to so make this the priority of your life. You make this the preeminent thing that you do. That all around you, you serve the Lord by telling people, showing people, preaching to people that Jesus Christ is Savior. In Mark chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world. It says we should literally go around the whole world. That means then in your community, there shouldn't be anybody that is not hearing, hearing the gospel. That means in your village, that means in your town, that means anywhere you are, local government, area, province, or territory, wherever. 
It says, there's nobody that shouldn't hear. Everybody should hear. The men, the women, the young and the adults, everybody hearing. It says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It says, don't tell stories, preach the gospel. Don't talk about yourself, preach the gospel. Don't spread slander or error. Preach the gospel. And don't go and be talking about politics. Preach the gospel. He that believeth, that is, he that believeth the gospel. What's the gospel? That Jesus is Savior. What's the gospel? That all have seen and come short of the glory of God. What's the gospel? That no matter what you do, no matter what church you go, no matter what good works you do, you cannot save yourself. What's the gospel? That whosoever will call on the name of the Lord, knowing you are helpless to save yourself, but Jesus Christ is willing and ready to save everyone that will come. The gospel is that when you call on the name of the Lord, He will save you. It tells us then, He that believes that personally is not a family religion, it's not a community religion, it's not a you know, society religion. It is a personal decision the Lord is calling us to by the gospel. And it says, He, the individual, the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not, what will happen? Shall be done. That means it's not just hearing. You call the people to a verdict. You call the people to a decision. And those who decide to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ died for me in particular. And then I hand over my life. In totality, I hand over that to the Lord. Then it says, as I believe and I'm baptized, I will be saved. I pray that if there's anybody there who has not got that salvation, anybody there who has not given his life to the Lord, anybody there who has not repented and turned away from evil, and then accepting Jesus Christ as your only Lord and Savior, anybody there, if you've not done that yet, you'll do that. And then after you've done that and you give your life to the Lord, you tell your friends, you tell your neighbors, you tell everybody around you, Jesus saved me, he will save you too. Give me a good amen. amen. We're looking at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, I'm reading there from verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. He gave the work to us to do. And that walk is what he started himself. We look at verse 10. He tells us what he himself, what he had done. He tells us what he himself was busy doing, what he was occupied in. And he said, I've shown the example. I've laid the pattern. Do what I'm doing and occupy till I come. In verse 10, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That means that he came for the sinners. He came to save them. And then he tells us in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24, he tells us from verse 45. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, that thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. The third day, that's the gospel, that Jesus Christ suffered for your sin, for my sin. Jesus Christ suffered for the sins of the world. Jesus Christ bore the penalty of the, the punishment of the sins of the world. And it was right. Because it's according to the word of God. It was right. It's according to prophecy. It was right. Because that was the will of the Father. And then he says, and that repentance and removal of sin. Repentance and cleansing from sin. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Verse 48, and ye are witnesses of these things. It says he's called us to witness and we ought to do it. We are going to do it in Jesus' name. Chapter 9 of John. John chapter 9. We're looking at verse 4. It tells us in verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me. You see the attitude of Lord Jesus Christ while others were 
idling their lives away, wasting their lives away, while others were squandering their lives, throwing their lives away on non-essentials, on, on important things, on the things that will not matter in eternity. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I have one assignment, I have one duty, I have one responsibility, and it is the work of him that sent me. And he said, I must. He said, I must. Necessity is laid upon me in the language of Paul the Apostle that this is the work to be done. Other people may understand, they may not understand. Other people may support, they may not support. Other people may agree, they may not agree. Pharisees and the Sadducees may oppose, but whatever they do or whatever they say, however they act, I must work. The works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now he passes that unto us. He says, I've done it. I've sacrificed my life. I've given everything. I pass it on to everyone that, is na that names himself to be a disciple. Go do the same as well. We're looking at John chapter 4. John chapter 4. It says in verse 35, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then comes harvest. It says, Say not ye, say not ye. There are some people that are having some self talk, private talk, private discussion, telling one another, telling themselves, and the Lord says, Say not ye. Anything that will bring delay, say not ye. Anything that will bring procrastination, say not ye. Anything that will say, it's not yet time. There's still time. We have to do this first and do this first and do that first. It says, say not ye. It says, this is the priority and this is the essential thing to do. Say not ye. There are yet four months and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white or ready to harvest. It says all those things you are telling yourself, I cannot do that now. I have some other things to do. I'll do it later. When I grow older, when I grow richer, when I've met all my needs, when all these things are done, when I've put this in place and put that in place, when the people are ready, he says, no, they're ready now. Look up and see the fields. And they are white already to harvest. Then he tells us, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. I reap, you reap, we sow, you sow. Every one of us sowing and reaping and bringing souls into the kingdom, we shall rejoice together. You know, all these uh, new districts were planting, all these new churches were raising up. And then the new leaders were choosing, and they were putting one here and putting one there, putting another there. The men and the women, the young people and the children, and we are all involved. We're sowing the seed, we're preaching the gospel, and we're teaching people the way of truth and the way of the Lord. And they are responding, and they're coming to the Lord, and the church is growing in your area, and the church is going over there. When we see the results of what the Lord is doing, it says, we shall rejoice together. You rejoice together if you have been involved. You rejoice together if you have won souls. We rejoice together if you are part of the sowers and the reapers. We rejoice together if you are involved in the harvest. I pray that you will not be left alone. You will not be the one standing at loop and looking at everybody. What are they doing at this time? What came upon the church at this time? Saturation church planting, evangelism everywhere, witnessing everywhere. Every Sunday we're all going out after the service. Nobody is waiting to see a coordinator or co coordinator. Nobody is waiting to see pastor or anybody. We just finish the service and say, the work is starting now. We'll receive a lot. We're going to give a lot to the people. And it is when you get involved like that, then you see the church growing. We're going to rejoice together in Jesus' name. And then he tells us in verse 38, I send you to reap. Where that, whereon ye bestowed no labor, all the men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. I pray that you will not be left alone in Jesus' name. We're talking about personal evangelism at this time. Our call, your own call. The call of the Lord unto you, unto personal evangelism. And then the priority. Uh, what was priority? That means you look at everything you are doing in the church, in your home, 
your personal life, in your family, and then you reorganize your time. You reorganize your activity and say, yes, this is good, but this is better. And you do not want anything that is good to hinder the coming in of what is better in your life. You know, that's the problem people have. They look at everything they're doing already. Activity in the church, activity at home, activity in the place of work. And they say, who will say this is not good? Tell me, who will say that is not good? You're doing your duty in the church, and your duty at home, and your duty everywhere. That's good. But something better has come. And when something better has come, you put the better thing in the forefront. You set your priority. You say, this is better. This is going to have eternal reward. Because of, you understand, you do not want the better thing to be underneath. You want to put it on top. That's why you set the priority and say, this is to have my attention. This is to have my affection. This is to have my money. This is to have my time. Set your priorities because the Lord has called us unto this personal evangelism. And it should be the priority, the number one thing that engages you. It will engage every one of us in Jesus' name. We're dividing the study to three parts. Number one, our call and privilege in personal evangelism. What a privilege. Angels would have loved to do this. And the people of old have gone on to glory. All that we're doing today, they would have loved to see many souls coming through into the kingdom of God through them. What a great privilege the Lord is giving you and giving to me. I pray we're not going to miss it in Jesus' name. Our call and privilege in personal evangelism. Number two, the compelling priority. Not just a priority, not an ordinary priority. It's a compelling priority of personal evangelism. As you just reorganize your life, organize your time, and you understand. Any other thing is not as important. Are you not going to say, I'm busy doing this, I'm busy doing that. And after all, this one is even church activity. And this one is even church assignment. All those church assignments, they're good. They're good. But I'll tell you something that is better, something greater. You know, even the people that go to hell, if they had their chance, they, they wake up and they'll say, this is what we should have done. Do you remember that man that was a rich man and then he fared sumptuously every day and then when he died, they went to hell. And then he told Father Abraham, Father Abraham, you have sent Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue because I'm tormented in this place. Father Abraham said, that's impossible. We cannot cross from here to you. Neither can the people, they are cross over here. He said, if that is the case, if I cannot get out of here, can you send Lazarus so that he will go to my five brethren that are in the world? What's he going to tell them? To tell them that there is hell fire. To tell them this is their chance that they ought to come out of their sin and repent and believe so that they will not come to this place. Even the people in hell. If they could, they'll want to come out and come and tell the people here. He didn't say St. Lazarus to go and tell them about my inheritance, about my property. That, that was not important anymore. On the other side of the grave, the real thing, the only thing, the major thing, the important thing is preaching the gospel to every creature. That's why that man in hell, he said, if I had my life to live again, if I had a chance to live again, if Lazarus could come, could go there and do this, this is what I would tell my five brethren. Well, he couldn't come back to tell them, but you are still here. You will tell them. I said, you will tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them, go and tell them, He is coming, He is coming, He is coming back again. And when you tell them, they will respond and they will give their lives to the Lord in Jesus' name. Number three, commitment on the part of personal evangelists. Commitment on the part of personal evangelists. Point number one now, our call and privilege in personal evangelism. What a call, what a call the Lord has given unto us. It tells us, we've read it, we're going to read it again, Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 18. Go, go ye therefore and teach. Don't go and gossip, don't go and slander, don't go and criticize, don't go and destroy, go and teach. 
And it says we teach all nations. That means as we go, all the communities, as we go, all those neighborhoods, as we go, all the people that are sitting in darkness, the people that do not know the Lord. The Lord is saying go. And there's only one thing to do when he says go is to get up from where you are. Is to get up from all those activities you are involved in and say, I've had the word of the Lord. I've had the message of the Lord. He says go. Go means get up. Go means move on. Go means knock on their doors. Go. It means go tell them that they don't need to perish in their sins because Jesus Christ died for them. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And then he says, when you've done that, don't just say, I've done my work. Integrate them with the church. Let them be part of the people of God. And when they become part of the people of God in the church, then the teaching will continue. Because before they became born again, they wouldn't even understand all the doctrines of the Bible. All they would not say that they were sinners. All they would not say is that Jesus Christ died to give them life eternal. All they will understand is that this is your chance. This is your opportunity. You can be saved now. You don't have to be lost. They will understand that. But then after they are saved, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, I have commanded you. And then he says, Lo, I am with you. How often? Always. Until when? Until the end of the world. Is the Lord with us? Yes. I said, is the Lord with you? Yes. While you are going, the Lord will be with you. Yes. His power will be with you. Yes. The grace of God will be with you. And the courage, the boldness, and the fearlessness to declare the truth of the word of God. Because the Lord, the one that is the captain of our salvation, that makes us more than conquerors. Because he's with you. That boldness and fearlessness and courage and wisdom, conviction, the Lord will give you as he's with you in Jesus' name. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. We're looking at that again in verse 15. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world. Go ye into where? Pronounce that A-L-L. Let me hear. Again. Tell me out loud. You know how some people do evangelism. Uh, they, they go to this house, they skip many houses, they go to another, and then they're roaming about. And then, uh, out of a hundred people in that community, they tell maybe about two or three. Oh, that means that you are making a survey in your community. Are there people in this community that never heard? Because they said, tell all. You're looking at all the streets. Are there streets in this community that they have never known? Because they says, tell all. And then you're looking at the language people that are there. You know, your own language people there, and the people that speak English there, and other languages and tribes and traditions that are there. Are there some denominational people? They go to church. Are there other religions? All. You're marking them out. You're surveying them. We must tell all. Must tell all. And if you do not do it in a systematic way, if you just do it haphazardly, you just went out the other time and then came back, you don't know where you have gone and where you have not gone. How are you going to tell all? But the Lord Jesus Christ said, You go into all the world. And then He says, You tell everyone. You preach to everyone. He says, Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to tell me. Tell me. Every creature, every creature. And you know, there are some people, they do not understand that every creature needs the gospel. Oh, he's a rich man. But the riches will not save them. He is an educated man. Education will not save them. He is a political man. Politics will not save them. It is the gospel. The good news that will save them. Therefore, whoever they are, and then as you are touching them in your office, you are touching them in your school, you are touching them in everywhere, everywhere you are. And you remember it's every creature, every creature. Never forget that. And when you meet somebody, you ask yourself, this is part of the every creature. Have I told him yet? This is part of the every creature. Have I told her yet? And this is part of the every creature. Have I made the gospel known unto him, unto her yet? You make sure that you are touching everyone. You are not afraid of anyone because the lion of the tribe of Judah lives inside you. And the power of God, of the Holy Ghost, is with you. And therefore, you are not looking at their height. Just like David, the little boy, the teenager, was not afraid of Goliath. You are not afraid of anyone. Are you afraid? I said, are you afraid? 
for God has not given us the spirit of fear, of timidity, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Go in that power, in that virtue of the Lord. You will succeed in evangelism in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 9, Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 9, we're looking at verses 1 and 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. But two, and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He sent them, he has sent me. I said he has sent me. But what are you doing? What are you doing? If he has sent you, are you doing it? If he has sent you, are you doing what he sent you to do? He gave us power. And if you just have that power, and you're sitting on the power. Do you know some people, they sing this song, they say, standing on the promises, standing on the promises. And I don't see them standing. They sit in the premises of idleness. They sit in the premises of laziness. They sit in the premises of doing nothing. And they kept on singing, standing on the promises. The people who are standing on the promises are the people who are going. They are the people who are touching other people's lives. And with joy, they know that the promise of God will never fail in their lives. He said, go, I'm going to be with you until the end of the world. And because of that, they don't listen to any other contrary voice. They don't listen to any kind of voice that will weaken them. Because while they are going and where they are moving and while they are telling other people, they are standing on the promises of God that will never fail. But the other people who never realize what they sing about, standing on the promises and in the premises of disobedience, in the, prom in the premises of faithlessness, in the premises of disloyalty, I will stand on the promises. And it is when you are going like that, giving the gospel, he says he has given us power. He has given us authority. And he sent us to preach the kingdom of God. And our people will flow into that kingdom. I pray that the authority has given you, the word he has given you, you will declare it and signs and wonders will follow you in Jesus' name. In Luke chapter 10, Luke chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 1. Luke chapter 10 verse 1, after these things the Lord appeared appointed all the 70 also uh, can you think about that he sent out 12 people originally and those 12 people were doing the work they were doing the work and then he came back then he sent 70 others 70 others uh, you know i said we are now a kind of uh, planting churches and evangelizing and there are some people who are still sitting back and they're sitting on the fence and they're just watching us they say, oh, what's happening? After all, our church is, you know, so large like this. And then they are still telling us, plant a church there, plant a church there. And they are appointing other people. All these people they are appointing, how are they qualified? How can they do anything? Hey, wait a minute. All these people that Jesus appointed, they are not even spent three years with Jesus yet. And, and none of them has all, the whole Bible in his hand. Because you see, all these gospels have not been written. All the epistles have not been written. All they had was the Old Testament scripture. And even they didn't have the complete thing. Jesus even said that many things that you have told you, I have not told you yet. They didn't know everything yet. But then the souls were there. And the people were perishing. And he appointed other 70 also. So that they will go out. They will go out. I pray that you will be among these people. Faithful people, loyal people, dutiful people, aggressive and passionate people that will go out and give the gospel to the people in Jesus' name. And you know, there are some people that also, uh, they the one that they say, okay, uh, we even understand we going out, but uh, where is the pastor? Where is the GS? Uh, uh, is he tra is traveled again? Oh yes, he's gone again. Why is he gone again? Because his souls are there. And because we need to preach to them, while you're doing it, I'm doing it. While I'm doing it, you're doing it. As father, like, like father, like children. Or should I stay back now? Not do anything anymore? I just fold my hand and say, oh Lord, when are you coming for me? I am tired. I want to go home now. I want to go and see so and so up there in heaven. Wait. We'll see him. We'll see her. We'll see all those for all eternity for millions and millions and millions of years. But now is the time to go. 
I said, now is the time to go. Therefore, when you hear that I'm gone, oh, you say, daddy is gone, I'm going to. I said, I'm going to. If I'm not sitting back and, you know, nothing this and nothing that, and I'm saying, I'm going to reach new people. I'm going to get to new people. I'm going to touch new lives. I'm going to save those people by the strength of the Lord. And the same passion that I have, the same compassion I have, as the Lord sent 12 and sent 70 again, that same passion, that same fire, I transfer to you today. You will go in Jesus' name. That's why it says in this chapter 10 verse 1, After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face. And then it says in that verse 1, Into every city and place, whither he himself would come. And then in verse 2, Therefore he said, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, and but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that she will send forth laborers into his harvest. We're going to do it. You will do it. I will do it. This great ministry of compassion, ministry of reconciliation, he has laid upon our shoulders and has given us a responsibility. We're going to effectively carry it out in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 5. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Thank God I'm a new creature. I say, thank God I'm a new creature. I don't sing old songs anymore, old dresses anymore. I don't wear them, old things, I don't do them anymore. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. And when the Spirit of Christ comes into you, and possesses you and transforms your life and translates your life into a new level you'll be a new creature and i see before me today new creatures i said i see before me today new creatures anybody there i said anybody there i see you i pray that the newness of the spirit will be in your life in jesus name and then he says old things are what they are passed away how many things have become new and you know, some people do not know the dynamic power of the Holy Ghost, and they don't know to the effective power of the grace of God in our lives. They just say, a little becomes new, a little becomes new, a little becomes... I want to be a moderate Christian. I want to be out and out Christian. I want to be a Christian of fire. I want to be a Christian that is passionate. I want to be a Christian that none of the old things, old laziness, Old idleness, old procrastination, old blindness. None of those old things will be in my life, and none of them will be in your life in Jesus' name. That you can say, Praise the Lord, I'm in Christ. And because I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If you are still as lazy as you are, what's the newness? If you are still as ignorant as you are, where's the newness? If you as dead, as lukewarm, as so are, where is the newness? If you are as pale, no stress, no backbone, no energy, no desire, no vision, no dream. If you are just like you are, how are you a new creature? If you are still singing what you were singing before, and saying what you were saying before, and just sitting back and laziness, as you were before, where is the newness? But if there's a fire burning in your bone now, and if there's passion within you now, if there's compassion, compassion for the lost, have compassion on them. If that thing grabs you and stirs you up, and you say, I cannot sit back, I cannot hold on, these sinners are there, these people are there, I must get after them, I must touch their lives and turn their lives around, that's a new creature. I said that's a new creature, and that is who you are now. Not who you will be in the future. Right here today, you are like that. Fire will come upon your soul. Fervency will come in your life. And the things you are afraid to do before, you rise up and do them in Jesus' name. Why? Because he has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and all things of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of what? You know, there are some people who have the ministry of scattering, the ministry of conflict, 
the ministry of knocking heads together, the ministry of making people tired and weak, the ministry of not getting people interested in the work of God, the ministry of discouragement. You know, as we are getting up and we're saying, I'm going to abandon that, I'm going to abandon that, this church planting that we're getting into now, and this evangelism we're getting into now, I'm going to be part of it. I'm going to bring my convert to the Sunday service next week. You know, as we're doing that, some people have the ministry of discouragement. And I say, what's the matter with you? Uh, why are you, are you you're carrying everything in your head as they say each day at the bible study they just run out and do it ministry of discouragement i pray that will not be your ministry but the ministry of reconciliation ministry of reconciliation that the sinners who do not know god you are reconciling them unto god you are telling them and showing them how they turn away from their sins and they come to believe on the lord jesus christ and jesus christ becomes the bridge between the sinner and the thrice holy God. And then when you are like that, you have the ministry of reconciliation. And he has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation in verse 19. To which that is that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, but has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He tells us again, number one, is the ministry of reconciliation. Number two, is the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are, what are we? Tell me out loud. Ambassadors. When ambassadors are sent from one country to the other, they don't think about themselves. They don't talk about themselves. They don't talk about their families. All they talk about is, the, is about the government that sent them. And it's the government of heaven, the kingdom of God, that has sent us into the world. And it says, this is what to do. This is what to preach. And this is what to teach. And that's what we're going to do. Because now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's head. What's the meaning of that? We pray you in Christ's head. We're pleading with you. What Christ would have done instead of Christ, if Christ were here, if Christ were here today, this is what you'll be doing. He'll be telling you, come to the Lord, come to the Lord, be reconciled unto the Lord. That's why it says we plead with you, we pray you, we beg, we beg you. In Christ's head, be you reconciled to God. He's telling us that there's a priority upon your life, a priority upon my life, and this priority we're going to fulfill in Jesus' name. You will fulfill. I said you will fulfill. Point number two, the compelling priority of personal evangelism. The compelling priority of personal evangelism. What does he say this is compelling? And this is a priority. I want you, I want you to think about everything you're doing in the church. Everything you're doing in the kingdom of God. And then you bring personal evangelism by the side of whatever it is you are doing. Whatever it is you are doing. And it's telling you that if you need to make a choice, I hope you don't have to make a choice. I think if you have been doing A, B, C, and D, and now this one comes E, evangelism. And then you put this E beside A, B, C, and D. If you have to make a choice, out of all these many things you have been doing, and then he is staring you at the face and he's saying, You're neglecting me, you're overlooking me, you're not doing evangelism, you're not bringing me into a very conspicuous position in your personal life and engagement. He says, If you have to make a choice, you might have to suspend A, or suspend B, or suspend C. Or suspend D, and then you put E on top of everything. And after you have declared the word of God, you've done the evangelism, you can then bring A back, or B back, or C back, or D back. That's what it means. But this is a compelling priority. The compelling priority of personal evangelism. Let's come to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're reading from verse 17. Ezekiel 3 verse 17. It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Hear the word at my mouth. What are we hearing now? What are we hearing now? What are you hearing now? 
the word you hear it from the mouth of the Lord after hearing it that's not the end you know some people I never miss Bible study I'm always there in our district I'm there in our city I'm there in our village I'm there anywhere I am even if I travel out I will go to the next nearest town where there's Bible study. I never miss Bible study you hear the word at his mouth but do you go to give it to your neighbor do you go to teach your neighbor do you go to tell them this is what I heard this is what I learned and I'm giving to you what I have learned. And he says, Son of man, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Therefore, you hear the word at my mouth. And then you give them warning. What I give you, you give unto them. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. I pray the Lord will not require the blood at your hand. If you go and preach, if you go and teach, if you go and tell the lost how they can be saved, if you go and win them, if you win them, the one by you, I win the one by me, and then one by one, we'll win them all at no time. We're going to do it. I said we're going to do it. I want you to notice something here. I want you to look at verse 17 again. Son of man, I've made thee a watchman. I've, I've made thee a watchman unto thee. Tell me. Tell me. Say that again. Uh, you know, there are people that, you know, they have all these uh, canal comparisons. And, and they say that, you know, if uh, you are doing this and you are doing that, they say, but why are you doing so much like that? I want to show something in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Remember, Ezekiel was made a watchman over the, tell me out loud, over the house of Israel. How many countries? How many nations? One. Je Jeremiah now. Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading here now from verse from verse 8. I'm reading to verse 10. It says, Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. The same with Ezekiel. God told Ezekiel, hear the word at my mouth. I'm going to put the word in your mouth to you. And then he says, Jeremiah, I put my word in thy mouth. See, verse 10, I have, I have this day set thee, tell me, how many nations? Many. Over the nations. And then over what? Over the kingdoms. One or many? Many. Uh, you know, um, look up here. You know, there are people that uh, compare pastor with another pastor, the GS with another GO, and they say, why is a pastor traveling out so much? After all, uh, so and so is always there in one, in one congregation. So and so is always there in one country. Why you see that, you know, we cannot see a pastor. They say he's gone here, he's gone there, he's gone there. Jeremiah's calling is different from Ezekiel's calling. You understand? I said you understand. And so, if Ezekiel stays in that one nation, son of man, I made you a watchman over the house of Israel. That was his calling. And then when God called Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, don't look at Ezekiel. Let Ezekiel stay in Israel. Let Ezekiel stay in that one nation. That's my calling for him. If he does that faithfully, I'm going to bless him. He doesn't need to run up and down here and there. That's his calling. But when Jeremiah was given the mission and the commission, I said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms. And we are the headquarters church here in Lagos. And also the headquarters church all over Nigeria. Where you hear that the GS has gone here, has gone there. What should you be doing? Gossiping, getting angry, and then when he comes back, and then he comes to have combined service, and then somebody is saying, "Good." If you have any question uh, today in the sad scripture, you can take that mic and raise up here. Where are you? And then you come out and you say, "It's okay, my sister. There was your question. 
Well, Pastor, my question is, where have you been going? That's your question. That's all the question you have. I have a better question. Where are you not going? And why are you not going? That's my question to you. You will go, I will go. I will go, and you will go. And so don't tell anybody to confuse you with all this, their gossip and all this, that talk, talk, talk. You know, pastor has gone out again, pastor has gone out again. You know, something good is happening. Something great is happening. And one day maybe I'll just pick you up and say, come and go with me. Praise the Lord. And as we go everywhere and preaching the gospel to every creature, many will turn to the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33, and I'm reading there from verse 1. This is the calling that God has given Ezekiel. The Lord has given you also a calling, and I pray you are going to be faithful to fulfill your calling in Jesus' name. Moses was faithful to his calling. Joshua was faithful to his own calling. And David was faithful to his calling. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, each of them, they were faithful to their calling. Now it is your turn. They have passed the baton unto you. They have passed the message unto you. You will be faithful in Jesus' name. And on that final day, why God is rewarding the apostles and the prophets and the evangelists and the pastors and teachers and the deacons and everybody, you will also come. You'll get your reward in Jesus' name. Nothing will miss out of reward in Jesus' name. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, speak to the children of, the, of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their for the watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. What the Lord is saying to Ezekiel is judgment is coming. And because judgment is coming, tell the people. And when they hear and they repent, then they have saved their souls. But if they hear and they do not take heed to the warning, if they perish, their blood will be upon them. I pray you will not perish. You are hearing the word from me. You are hearing the warning from me. And when you take heed to what you are hearing, you take it seriously, then eternal life will come upon you. And you will not perish in Jesus' name. And the people you are also telling, if they take heed to what you are telling them, you are telling them that Jesus is Savior. No other salvation, no other Savior can be given unto us. It's only Jesus, only Jesus. If they take it to that, they too, they will be saved. They will not be lost in Jesus' name. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. It says, well, to give the more honest heed to the things we're hearing, lest at any time we should let them slip away from us. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? How shall they escape? The people we're going to, the people we're announcing the message to, and the people were preaching to, the people were teaching, and were telling them, this is the way of escape. Run for your life. Escape from the judgment to come. If they neglect, if they will not hear, if they will not give heed, if they will not decide, if they will not give their lives to the Lord and be saved, if they will not allow Jesus Christ to take the punishment of their sins away, how shall they escape if they neglect so great salvation? which had the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. That means then we ought to be very quick in listening to the word of God, accepting the word of God, because if we know the right thing to do and we don't do it, what does it become? Sin. James chapter 4, verse 17. 
James chapter 4, verse 17, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, tell me the rest. Tell me. To him it is seen. Now, let's read it properly. Therefore, to you that know to do good and you don't do it, to you, tell me, it is seen. What's the good thing we're talking about? Saving the lost, telling the truth, spreading the gospel, teaching the word of God to people, preaching, proclaiming the message of salvation to those who are lost. And then you say, you know, that's the good thing. It's like if you see somebody by the roadside, that person is bleeding, almost bleeding to death, but you could save his life by just picking him up there, taking him to the hospital. His life could be saved, but you say, I'm, I'm busy, I'm in a hurry, I want to get here, I want to get there, I want to reach this place, I want to reach that place, and that person is crying to you, help me, help me, you can save my life, I'm, I'm dying, I'm dying, and then you just look at him and pass by, if he dies in that condition, you know the hospital to take him to, you have a vehicle, you are driving, and you could have helped, but you neglected, you neglected the cry of that suffering individual about to die. For you that know to do good, and you don't do it, to you it is sin. We know that people are dying in sin, multitudes, dying in sin every day. And the urgent thing the Lord is calling us to is have mercy on them, have compassion on them, and do this good thing. And tell them of the message of life, so that they will not be lost. And to him that knows to do good, and does, does, does it not, to him it is sin. Why is personal evangelism a compelling priority? Number one, because the time is short and the, and the end is near. The time is short and the end is what? Near. That's one of the reasons why we ought to make personal evangelism and preaching the gospel a priority. Uh, we're looking at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 29. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29. And this I say, brethren, the time is short. The time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though, tell me, tell me, they have none. Uh, you, you know some of these people that never read the whole Bible, all they read is, uh, they read only one part of the Bible. And then they come, they say, Pastor, I discovered this thing in the Bible, and I don't know what it means. I want you, Pastor, to please explain to me what they are trying to do is, they are trying to say, Pastor, have you read this before? I, th I want to show you this. You need to read this one and look at this one. And they say, I read this part, and it says that if the people are going to war, and then there are people there who just got married, we should excuse them. They should stay behind for one whole year. They'll be looking at the face of their wives. All that they ought to do, they will not do. That's all they can read in the Bible. When the Lord said, go ye into all the world and do what? Preach. We will preach. I said we will preach. Anybody there, you are going to preach with me. You just got married, I got married to you. No, that's not life. That's not everything in life. Everything in life is people are dying. People are perishing. And you go everywhere. You don't have any time to just sit down there. And you know, because now we just got married. And because now we just got this. And, just, and ne never do anything anymore. We're going to do the work of God. And this, this is the passion we had in the 70s. It's the passion we had in the 80s. It is still the same passion we have today. And we're going to do this work until our last blood, drop of blood, is given for each in Jesus' name. That's why it says, but this I say, brethren, the time is short. And it remaineth, but the both they that have wives be as though they had none. But starting, it says, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not, and they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world. 
passeth away. That's the reason why the Lord is saying, what we need to do is to concentrate on the preaching of the gospel. You will, I will, we will together in Jesus' name. Number two, because souls are precious to God. If anything is precious to God, just the souls of men, gold and silver, money and currency, education and certificate, all that is not as precious. If there's anything that is precious unto the Lord, He wants you to take care of, it is this preaching of the gospel. Mark chapter 8. In Mark chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 36. And what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That means the soul of man and the people we're reaching out to, those souls are the most precious. And therefore we need to reach out to them. Not only that, number three, hell is the end of all who die in sin. Hell fire is the end of all those who die in sin. If you could rescue those people, if you could pull those people that are the very brink of hell, pull them out, what a great work that will be. That's the priority. We're not there to go and entertain people. We're not there to just go and share our talent. We're not there to go and share much of the Bible. We know we're there to go and rescue these people who are about to go to hell. I pray God will give us wisdom. Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, he tells us this is what we're to do. He tells us from verse 42, And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. And if thy, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter into life, men, than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that what? That never shall be quenched is eternal fire. Number four, multitudes die every day. Multitudes in every city. In every country, multitudes, millions of people are dying every day. And because of that, we need to reach out to them. The paths of darkness and the cult, occultic people, they're growing. They're growing by leaps and bounds. And if you don't reach the people in time, occultic people reach them. They enslave them. They bring them into a devilish covenant. And once they've done that for you to now say, I come to bring the gospel, they say you are late. You are late. Because they've gone into covenant already with those evil powers and evil spirits. We're looking at uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. Revelation chapter 13. We're looking at verse 13. It says in verse 13, And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of these miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. The occultic people, the false prophets, they're deceiving people with lying wonders and false miracles. That's the reason why it's important for you to get up in time and to go and reach them and to go and speak to them. Number, number six, those who neglect personal salvation will be guilty before God. Those who say, I'm busy doing this, I'm busy doing that. If you neglect these things that we're talking about, you'll be, be, you'll be guilty before the Lord. We're looking at First, first Kings chapter 20. First Kings chapter 20. I'm reading there from verse 39. First Kings chapter 20, verse 39. And you know, there are some people that say, well, God understands. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I could have said that too. I could have said that too. I'm so busy. I'm preparing for December retreat. I could have said that. I'm so busy. I'm preparing for the Congress. I could have said that too. I'm so busy. I'm writing Bible study outlines. I'm so busy. I'm, you know, writing this and writing this. And I'm so busy. I have to, you know, touch this area of ministry, touch this area of ministry. I'm so busy supervising the overseers. I'm so busy looking at what the other things I go. I'm so busy with can. I'm so busy with PFN that I cannot go and do what the Lord wants me to do. Excuse making. And there are people, you don't seem as busy as myself, and yet you cannot go out. I pray that all that laziness, God will cure us from that in Jesus' name. Excuse making, excuse making. I cannot because I'm doing this. I cannot go there because I, I, I just came from here. I want to tell you, all these excuses, everything will vanish away. And, and you know what? I've been, you know, I've been busy. Am I busy? Am I busy or lazy? Lazy. Which one? Okay. 
I came back just yesterday morning. You know, I've been away doing this and doing this and doing that. In the morning, what, what you were coming to the service, I, I, the plane landed at 7 o'clock in the morning yesterday. And then I quickly came over here and then cleaned up and all that. And then I came to the service. As I came to the service, when the question time came, you have any question there? While I was away, I had to read and answer the scripture. While I was away, I had to read everything and pre prepare myself. While doing this there, doing this there, I had to prepare my message for yesterday. And then today, Monday Bible study again. And this week, I'm gone again because the call is coming from here. Call coming from here, coming from here. The thing I'm telling you to do, I'm doing it too. I'm not like the people that say, say, do as I say and not as I do. But I say like Paul the Apostle, follow me because I'm following Christ. You will follow. Yeah. I said you will follow. Yeah. Nobody will grumble. Nobody will complain. All of us will join hearts and hands together. And we're going to really reach this nation and every nation of this world for the Lord in Jesus' name. Yeah. Are you ready? Will you do it? Yeah. Manifest the same zeal, the same passion. Don't complain. Don't say, I'm tired. If I'm not tired, you are not tired. Yeah. We're not tired. Yeah. I said, We're not tired. Yeah. Well, we'll do it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Look at this man, excuse making, excuse making. He had a disease, a disease, the disease of excusitis. That's how they call it. The people making excuse. Look at verse 39. And as the king passed by, he cried unto the king and said, Thy servant went out into the midst of the battle. And behold, a man turned aside and brought a man unto me and said, Keep this man. If by any means he is missing, then shall thy life go for his life, or else thou shalt pay a talent of silver. And as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. Look at that, the tragedy of abandoning what you ought to do. The tragedy of being busy on non-essentials. He said, as thy servant was busy here and there, he was gone. And the king of Israel said unto him, so shall thy judgment be thyself as decided it. I pray that we'll escape that judgment in Jesus' name. Number seven, conversion of sinners causes joy in heaven. When you go out and you win souls and people are converted, there is joy in heaven. I said there is joy in heaven. Your ministry will cause joy in heaven. Your soul winning will cause joy in heaven. Your evangelism will cause joy in heaven. Therefore go out every day, every time and let there be some singing, some shouting and some joy, some celebration in heaven because of what you do. Point number three before we pray. Commitment on the part of the personal evangelist. Commitment on the part of the personal evangelist. The Lord is calling you to commitment and the Lord is calling me to commitment and the Lord is saying arise and do it. Go and do it. Tell the people and show them the way of life, the way of salvation. Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9, from verse 35. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. And Jesus went about, how? Tell me. Tell me out loud. All the cities and villages. Look at what Jesus did. The Savior. He had, Paul, he had Peter there, John there, James there. He had all the other people there. He could have delegated to them. He is king of kings. He is lord of lords. He is the lord of glory. He could have just stayed there. He could have said, it's enough for me to die on the cross for them. It's enough for me to pay the penalty of their sin. And nobody else can do that. And once I've done that, that's enough. But no, he went into all the cities. All the villages, it's like he marched them out. That's what I'm talk, talking about, about survey. He said, there's a city there, there's a city there, a village there, a village there. And then he took all, some of the roads were narrow. Some of the roads were broad. Some of the roads were hilly. Some of the roads were stony. But he went to all the city in spite of the roads, in spite of the stones, and in spite of the hilly nature of all those roads. We're told he went to every city, and he went to every village. That's what I'm telling you. That in your community, in your district, in your community, in your group, you look at all the communities there. All the communities there, 
all the localities there you make sure you plant a church in every community because that's what jesus did he went about all the cities and all the villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people the lord jesus christ was not lazy you are a child of god a follower of christ you will not be lazy I said, you'll not be lazy. And then it says, but when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and they were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest really is plenteous, and the laborers have, but the laborers have few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that she will send forth laborers unto, into his harvest. That's why I'm praying for you. You'll be one of those laborers. He'll send you forth. As a coordinator, he'll send you forth. As a woman coordinator, he'll send you forth. As a pastor of a local church, he'll send you forth. And as workers, as members who are there, you've been in the church for a long time, and you're just drinking in and taking in, and just taking the word of God, and you know the Bible, and you are born again. And you could have told the people there how to be born again, but you're just soaking it in, and you're never giving it out. Be careful, you might come like the Dead Sea that is receiving quite a lot and then not flowing out. You'll not be like a Dead Sea. You reach out to other people because we're praying for you. Say, Pray the Lord of the harvest that will thrust out, you'll send forth the laborers into his harvest field. You'll be one of us, one of the preachers, one of the soul winners, one of the evangelists. You know, that's what I'm telling the people. Let's say, sometimes it, we rely too much on video crusade, video crusade, video crusade. Because it's the chairs and the pastor and he declares the word of God there. Now, we're going to take those videos and put them in our office here because now you are the video. Yeah. And then you go there to that community. And when they're expecting video and film, they said, I'm more than a film. Because the power of God now resides within you. And then instead of just video, 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 every time you just reach out there, you go to all the villages, you go to all the towns, you go to all the cities, you go to all those communities. And when it's, have you brought another video? I brought something more than video. Because you, you are going to do it. And when you preach, how do you do it? If you don't know how to do it, get any of those tapes yourself and listen over and over and over. And when you listen to all those things that preach, and then when it gets into you, and then you pray, then you go out, everything you have received, you go and deliver unto them. And the same power God has given me to heal the sick, that power will come upon your life. And the same power to deliver the oppressed, that same power I transfer unto you. You will not see the result until you go, because... When you go, this sign shall follow them that, that believe. I'm one of those believers. I'm one of those believers. And he says, in my name, they will cast out devils. When they lay hands on the sick, when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they wage everywhere. The Lord walking with them, the Lord will walk with you. That's why the Lord is calling us to action. He's saying, now is the time. He says, get up and do it. You are going to do it effectively. We're looking at John again. John, John. We're looking at this John. And it's chapter 4. And we're looking at it from verse 33. Verse 33. But he said unto them, I have meat in verse 32 to eat, which ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, as any man brought him out to eat, Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Is that your meat? Is that your desire? That's your joy? That's your delight? That's your craving? That's your dream? That's your vision? It says, My joy, my meat, my satisfaction, the thing that fills me up is doing the will of him who has sent me. And then it says, Say not ye that yet four months there cometh the harvest. Behold, I send you, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are wide or ready to harvest. Your neighbors are waiting for you. The communities are waiting for you. They are wide or ready to harvest. When you go there, the word of God is your mouth. Say it out, the people are going to be saved. Speak it out, the people are going to be healed. Deliver the message, and your message will deliver the people. Get them out of darkness and get them into the light in Jesus' name. 
Why don't you rise up and say, yes, Lord, I will do it. Yes, Lord, I will do it. Yes, Lord, I will do it. The Lord is calling us to commitment. The Lord is calling us to real, real fervency in this work of the Lord. No more laziness. No more idleness. No more procrastination. No more delay. This is the time. This is the time. Get up and do it. And say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. You called me. Thank you, Lord, you're sending me. Thank you, Lord, you're giving this work into my hand. And I'm going to do it effectively. The Lord has called you and the Lord is going to fulfill his will through you. Multitudes will get saved through you. Churches will be planted through you. Backsliders will be restored through you. Because now you have the message. Now you have the light. Now you have the passion. Now you have the mercy. Now you have the kindness. Now you have the compassion. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. He is coming again. He is coming again. He is coming back again. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn within you. Let the passion grow within you. Let the zeal rise up within you. Every laziness and indolence, cowardice, lukewarmness, that the Lord will burn it up from your heart. You say, Lord, here am I. And you lay everything on the altar. Whatever it will cost. The time, the skill, the talent, your ability. Even if you have to suspend A, B, C, or D that you have been doing, and you put E, evangelism, to the limelight, to the forefront, to become the priority of your life, say it will be done. Don't allow anything to make, to make you take a back seat. Anything to make you just bow your head in defeat. I cannot. You can you can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You cannot be defeated. Well, the Lord has sent you and has given you the promise. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. So you may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord who has sent you, He'll support you. The Lord who has sent you, He'll go with you. He'll never fail you. He'll never forsake you. The word is your mouth. The word of reconciliation. The ministry is yours. The ministry of reconciliation. That's the priority of your life now. Thank God, thank God for all the other things we are doing in the church. But the number one, the priority, the best, that should not be buried because of the good things we are doing. The best of all is that to go out there, preach the gospel to every creature. That's the best of all. That's the best of all. Compared to every other thing you are doing now. Any other thing you are doing now. Any other thing you are doing now. This is the very best. And the more you go, the more it fills you, impacts his life, his power, his authority, anointing and unction upon your life. Go and tell them. Go and tell them that Jesus died for sinful men. Go and tell them. Go and tell them. He is coming. He is coming. He is coming back again. Don't be like that man. Messiah was busy here and there. Messiah was busy here and there. He was calm. God appoints some people over a village. God appoints some people over a town. 
God appoints some people over a city. God appoints some people over a state. God appoints some people over a nation, like Ezekiel, one nation. God appoints some other people over kingdoms and nations, many. We are not of them that have carnal comparison, just are gossiping, slandering, complaining, grumbling. Our pastor is gone again, our GS is gone again. It's not just a pastor over Lagos, not just a GS over Nigeria. You ought to go again and go again and go again and keep on going again. Do your part and I do my part. I do my part and you do your part. I won't disturb you. You won't disturb me. Let Ezekiel go forth and reach the nation. Let Jeremiah go forth and reach the nations. Let the local pastor go forth and reach his community. Get up and do it. Get up and do it. Get up and do it. Don't get into the ministry of discouragement. The ministry of delaying other people, disturbing other people, discouraging other people. Ministry of encouragement. Ministry of reconciliation. Ministry of empowerment. Go do your bit. Go do the work. The people are waiting. They're waiting for you. Go tell them. Go tell them. Don't tell useless stories. Don't tell unprofitable stories. Story of the cross. The story of the cross. Jesus died for sinful men. Lay everything you've got on the altar. Give of yourself. Give your life. Give your time. Don't complain. I'm tired. You cannot be tired with Jesus living on the inside of you. Don't complain. I'm getting older. The older I get, the more tired I am. When the power of the Holy Ghost is within you, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnessing something both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. That's your calling. Get up and do it. Get up and do it. I say, Lord, I will. I will go. I will go. Every neighborhood, I will go. Every community, I will go. Every city, I will go. Every village, I will go. And when you have opened your mouth to say something to the Lord, be like Jephthah and don't go back. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Give him of your best. Give the best of what you've got. Your good time. Your productive time. Time when you are awake. When you can move in the strength of the Lord. Go and preach the gospel. Don't let them perish. Preach. Don't 
Let your prayer bring the power of God upon your life. Let your prayer energize you from within. Let your prayer make the fire to burn within your soul. What you have read, what you have heard, what you have learned, let it stir you up. What you have read, what you have heard, what you have learned, let all that stir you up. Don't be like the people that are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Don't put this bread of life into the fridge. Cold, unedible, inedible. Bring it on fire. Warm it up. For the fire be beneath it. Make it edible. Turn it over in your heart. Meditate on it. Serve it. With excitement and joy. With hope and expectation. Give the bread of life to those who are hungry. Yes, said go. Go. Said go, don't stay, don't sit, don't fall by the wayside, go. Say no to laziness, say no to fear, say no to excuse making. Say, yes, Lord, it's time. Yes, Lord, it's time. Yes, Lord, it's time. I will. I must work. The works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. Say not, yet four months before the harvest will come. Lift up your eyes, for the fields are white, already to harvest.